Uh, hi everyone. Um, following on from my last video, uh, I sent an email to Bogdan, who's the guy that actually wrote Level Helper, and, and asked him some questions about um, about what I was doing effectively, because if you recall from the last time, I made a few mistakes with how we set up the camera. Now, Bogdan very, very kindly um, recorded a, a YouTube video um, which answered a lot of the questions, not just about the camera, but also about how to um, lay out scenes using the snap thing. If you remember from one of the earlier videos, I didn't know whether there was a, a way to do um, snapping for, for laying out stuff. And what Bogdan shows is that, um, you know, level help is incredibly powerful um, and, and does everything that you really need. Um, so anyway, I'm going to post the link to that video uh, on this, and and I'll I'll do it from my my blog site as well. Um, but anyway, so continuing on, what I've done, I, I've I've gone a bit more advanced with this, and as we continue this series, we're actually going to create a um, an actual platform game, um, and. What I'm going to show you now, I, I've I've done some, I've done a load more uh, of these fairly uh, rudimentary graphics. I'm not a very good artist, as you can see, um, but they should be good enough to to get the point across. Now, all of this, I point out, is entirely in in level help at the moment. I haven't done any code whatsoever. So if I preview this, what you're just going to see how this operates and, and what you're able to achieve just with level helper. Um, so you'll notice there, obviously, physics is enabled, but you've got some parallax going on in the background. There we've got a, an animation of a fairly friendly looking spike thing. And then we've got another animation just simulating some movement of water. Um, now all of that, as I say, was just done with Level Helper. Um, so throughout the rest of this series, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into an actual functioning game. And you'll see that it's really, really simple to do. Um, but before we do that, um, one thing I am going to show you though is how to uh, get a reference to an object um, in code. Um, just that again just for the hell of it really you can see what's actually going on there uh, there's our movie things and, and what have you now so what we're going to do um, is we're going to stop this a second um, we're going to get a reference to this object I'm going to move it down here so that it doesn't do anything um, and we're just going to uh, manipulate that in code so if we click on the test lure a test scene lure file there um, that could you can get to that by clicking that and then go into test scene there okay so the first thing we're going to do now I've actually done this um, beforehand mainly because I don't like doing live sort of coding because I spell it wrong and make mistakes and you just end up watching a video of me swearing and figuring out why I can't do something so what we do is we we declare we make a forward declaration of our player object uh, oh, let me go back sorry let me just go back to level editor uh, level helper sorry um if we click this object here you'll see that i've given it a new name of player um that's very important and now back to code um local player equals nil it's just a forward declaration then in the will phase of the um, composer boilerplate code, um, we play, uh, player. We're going to call this method of LHC. Now LHC is part of the Level Helper API, um, and all we're doing is literally get child node with unique name, and then that name that we put in. And now we have a we have a reference to our player object. So. From then on, we can pretty much do anything that we want as you normally would with Corona. Um, now, what I've actually done here is I've created an update um, function, um, which is going to be, it's going to be, a, we've got a runtime event listener here, um, 
sorry, this one. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, runtime event, the add event listener here, end frame. So that's the actual um, event that we're adding a listener to, and that's the function. And what the function is going to do should be easy to figure out is it's going to take the x um, coordinate of the player and then just add one to it. Okay. Now we also have another one here, and this is very rudimentary at the moment, and I can go into why that is. But we've added another event listener, and this is the event listener for touch, and it's on screen touch is the function, which is this one here. Um, if the event touch, uh, if the touch event is began, then we're going to apply a force to the player. Now I can show you what will happen there, um, but there's some problems which there's a problem with that code, which which we'll address in a later phase. But just so you know, though. If we preview this, um, our, our player isn't, that's that's physics that's moving the player. The actual Lua code isn't affecting that at the moment. And likewise, if I, you know, if I do a touch, that isn't going to happen. What we have to do to actually get that side of things to work is we need to publish the scene. Okay, and then uh, run it in the in the um, thing. Now you'll see that our player is now moving along quite noticeably and that will be every frame and it will be um, one X unit per frame. Now if I click you'll see that it's jumping but if I keep clicking you'll see that it's still jumping even though it's in the air. Now that's the problem that I was mentioning. That's, that's the behavior that you don't want normally in, in a in a platformer game. I mean maybe maybe if he was doing Angry Birds or something it would be fine but we don't want that. So anyway we'll address that in a later video on how to solve that. Okay so I just want to this be a quick introduction to what we're going to do and what we're going to achieve and as you can see it's, it's a, still a very very powerful piece of software. Okay until next time.